Hey y'all, just a quick video on a project I'm working on. Thought I'd share a portion of it with you. Um, I need these hold downs. Basically, they're just for aesthetics. They're not gonna have a whole lot of functionality. Although if I decided to use these solely as the hold down method, that, that would be good. Um, they would work fine. Basically what I've used is a nail and a die and I cut some threads in this to kind of make it like um, a wood screw. So just a quick silly little video I thought I'd share with you all. That was the first one that I made and I'm going to use that as a guide so I know where my, um, my bends and lengths and all that stuff are. Uh, basically I made that using a nail and I'm going to make the other three that I need using a nail as well. Honestly, I'm not sure what size this nail is. I can never remember what common 90s. I just look at the length and the width and that's how I pick what nail I need. So, quick disclaimer, this video is not intended to be um, a video on safety. So, real quick, gloves, chaps, Eye protection. You don't want to lose the old peepers while you're having fun. So I used to be a farrier and I went to farrier school and I learned some blacksmithing skills and I've kind of expanded upon that and I use it in other facets of things that I do. So what we're going to do first off is we're going to heat this nail up and I have a Whisper Mama forge and I have another video reviewing that forge as well as this Calvary 112 pound NC anvil. So if you have any interest in that, check it out. Let me get this nail hot. And this is really quick and easy. And because it's a light piece of metal, it really doesn't take long to warm up. So I won't bother cutting off the video to save time. It really shouldn't take that long. takes to warm up this nail. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to flatten out the head of this nail and a small portion of the length. And I don't want to go too far because I need to make a 90 degree bend and then I need to cut the threads in that. So, I don't care if it's exactly the same as the other ones. I'm kind of into making things out of reclaimed items, wood, metal, and so forth. So, I, I want it to be obvious that it was handmade. So, I really don't look for everything to be perfectly symmetrical. Um, as you can see here, that's pretty close and that's going to work for me. I, I want people to know that this has been handmade. So I'm going to reheat this and then I'm going to make the 90 degree bend. And it definitely cools down quick because it's a thin piece of metal. I'm going to set this up on the end of the edge of the anvil so that I can get it very close to the other one. That I kind of want the lengths to be the same, but I'm not super worried about the rest of it. I just don't want it to look like the chimp made it. So we'll just lay this next to the one I've already made. And these are easy, you can bend these by hand. I mean, you really don't need a hammer to put the 90 in it. So, that's the two of them, and that's gonna work for me. 
Now I'm just going to warm it back up and don't laugh at my cutoff hardy. I made this because I needed one quickly so it's out of a railroad spike and it definitely is lacking in appearance anyway but it works well. I could probably just cut these off with a pair of dykes. You know what I might just do that to save propane. Let me grab a pair. I'll be right back. We'll get about the same, which is about right there. And yeah, that looks good. So I'm just going to straighten this out and make it a nice 90 degree angle. And I don't even have to warm it up for that because it's, and it's cool already anyway. But because it's so thin and I didn't quench it, excuse me, I didn't quench it, it um, it's not a problem with it breaking or cracking or anything like that. I'm not going to bother putting a point on this in the area that I'm going to thread because I'm going to pre-drill the hole anyway to get it started. And the hole obviously is going to be smaller than the threads that I cut into this. So we'll just pretty that up a little bit and get that 90 as close to a 90 as I can. And you always drop something when you do this, I swear. But that looks pretty decent. I'm happy with that. Almost happy with that. I swear I have some OCD going on. Even though I don't care that it's exact, I still get anal about it. Okay, now I'm going to drag you over here and show you. All right, don't mind my shop. I've been pretty busy lately and I've been lacking in my made skills. So basically we're just gonna lock this in the vise. And it depends on what size nail you're using. Um, you know, you'll obviously choose the right die for, for the size of the nail. And nails are pretty soft to begin with, so just try and get it started straight. And then just run it down. Nails aren't made of the best steel in the world, so it's not really an issue with, you know, backing up like this to get rid of the chips. They kind of just fall away. Something hardened or like in the automotive business, I did a lot of time there. Yeah, you'll break your tools if you if you don't use them correctly. But for the most part, you can run this all the way down. No big deal. Boring. Okay, we're bottomed out. Now it should spin off nice and easy because of the new threads we just cut. All right, so that's that. I don't know how well the camera will pick that up but the threads are cut and I'll move you to yet another part of the shop and show you why I'm making these. And this is only a test piece. But what I did is I found this old table and it's, it's a small table. It's probably 10 and a half inches. In case you weren't aware, 
on, on a guy's hand, if you stretch your fingers out as far as you can get them from the tip of your thumb to the tip of your pinky, most guys are nine inches. So this is just a scrap piece of wood to illustrate what I'm up to. So what I'm gonna do on, on the mounting frame that I'm making for this is I'm gonna thread this into it. And this little tabletop, the reason that I chose to save this is because I looked at it pretty good and it looks like this is hand carved because nothing in here is exactly the same as anything else. It's actually pretty cool. But this is eventually going to be mounted to a wooden frame and I'm going to use these hold downs that I just made to give the appearance that that's what's holding it to the frame. I'm of course going to use a decent glue and I'm going to glue this tabletop to the back of the wood frame that I'm making. But I'm going to have these one on each side and then one on the top as well. So like I said it gives the appearance that it's it's held down with these these brackets if you will. This is going to get restained, resanded and if anybody's interested, post a comment and I'll show um, a quick video of what I've made and what it looks like when it's completed. And the distressed look, the holes that someone in the past has drilled in this, I'm going to leave all that there. I think that lends to the authentic authenticity of hand creation. And that's kind of what I'm into. I actually make a lot of stuff. Um, and I just started a new website. It's countryanvil.com. So, oh, and speaking of uh, websites, it's not actually, well, it is a website, but if you guys are into blacksmithing and forging and stuff, there's a great guy out there from upstate New York. His name is Chandler Dickinson. If, if you want to meet a guy online that's, that's very tenacious and, and, and pretty talented, in my opinion, um, check him out. Just Google his name and then click videos and he's got several hundred videos out there. He seems like a great guy and he's ve very entertaining. So anyway, I just wanted to show you all what you can do with a nail. And I'm sure there's billions of other things you can do, but this is what you can do with a nail in about five minutes if you're all set up. Any questions, comments, complaints, I welcome them all. Thanks y'all and have a great day.